this is Ruth, welcome to this week's video and if you are new to my channel it's really lovely to have you here and today's video is kind of an unfortunate one because I've had a really really tough week just to um, give you a little bit of a background about the topic of this video and creating safe spaces which is something that I've wanted to talk about for quite a while on my YouTube but um, I've had since I posted my last video um, we've had a break in in the house so somebody has come and broken in when we've not been in the house and has taken some of our stuff and kind of like pulled everything out of the drawers and done the whole burglar um, you know mess up your house thing which is really horrible to well one if you were in the house I mean we weren't in the house so that was something I was really grateful for but still like the shock of them being in the house and the fact that someone has invaded um, my personal space and been through my stuff without my permission feels really challenging so it was hard for me to even make a video this week but it really got me thinking more and more about the idea of how important safety is to our um, mental health to our well-being and then obviously the fact that when things happen to us, such as um, a break-in, or it could be a mugging, or it could be um, someone spikes our drink, or anything where we feel that our boundaries and our safety has been compromised is really, really upsetting and difficult. And actually, just like a couple of days before we got broken into in the house, I was reading um, an Instagram post from Tina Nance, a yoga therapist, and she shared this quote, I've got it on my laptop here, so if you want to improve the world, start by making people feel safer. And this is by um, a scientist called Stephen Porges, who pioneered the polyvagal theory, which is all around like how our nervous system works and why safety is so important for our physical health, for our mental health, for our well-being. And the polyvagal theory is all around this vagus nerve, which we have, which, you know, vagus means wandering. I think it's a Greek, maybe a Greek word or a Latin word. And it basically means wandering, which is this nerve in our body that wanders to all of these different organs, it wanders to our gut, it's talking to our brain, the gut is talking to our brain, the brain's talking to our gut. And it has this hugely complex role in the body, which is all about kind of controlling our nervous system, keeping us calm, letting us know when to be fearful. And his theory is really interesting, but that's another video. And that's really all about how we can feel calmer and calm our nervous system so I thought that was a really interesting quote from him which I already had in my mind a little bit before the burglary and then there was a really nice extra quote that was in the the bottom of the Instagram post which I'm just going to read because I think it's it's really interesting around the topic of safety so safety is a rare commodity the problem is that many of us have no idea that we actually feel unsafe that our anxiety, our sense of unrest, and need for drugs or distraction is actually the nervous system showing us that safety is absent. When we enter a space where safety has been established, thought about in great detail, cultivated carefully, we immediately know something is different. Why? Because all of a sudden we feel at peace possibly for the first time in our life. It can be in the presence of a person with a loving pet or a specific place, sometimes in nature. When we as a society shift to creating safe spaces as a focus, rather than places that generate profit, we will finally evolve this planet into what it is meant to be, a place of experience, heaven on earth. So, that really beautiful quote is from um, Gemini Adams, who is a somatic trauma therapist. So I'm going to post links to all of this below. But I thought that was really interesting that 
just that idea of how rare actually safety can be and how sometimes until we experience safety we didn't even know that it was missing in our lives and I've definitely felt like since I'm, I'm doing a little bit of self-disclosure and a bit of like just rambling in this video but since we were broken into on Saturday I felt like a lot of my trauma and lack of trust has really been coming back up very vividly in um, like waking hours, in dreaming hours, I've been having some absolutely crazy dreams and remembering a lot of traumatic events in my past that have made me feel really unsafe. So for example, like I haven't thought about this in a long time, but over the weekend, I was all of a sudden thinking about the time when I was 17 and I was on a night out with my friend and um, a man spiked my drink with the um, Rohypnol, the date rape, whatever. Um, I don't know what it's called around the world. But just this idea that um, once you've had this substance, it basically like paralyzes your body. And so you can't feel anything, you can't move, but you your brain is totally okay. So you know what's going on, but you're not physically able to move. And that was a really traumatic experience for me as a 17 year old to go through. Although I know that I wasn't left alone and this man wasn't able to get to me, um, it was still really a traumatic experience. And the fact that that has like bubbled back up for me from nowhere, like how many years has it been? like nearly tw like 17 years since that happened so that's been really eye-opening for me just about how much of the trauma that we carry from these experiences really still lives within us even if we think we've forgotten about it and it doesn't affect us anymore it's just something can trigger it off and it can really set us back off and I was also thinking about the fact as a child I know we had like a few maybe like outbuilding break-ins and one proper like breaking in the house and I used to sleep like I used to have a little bell that I put on my door so I'd basically know if someone was trying to come in my room when I was a kid and I also used to go to sleep like holding onto the the sheet thinking that if someone tried to drag me out of the bed when I was little that um they wouldn't be able to get to me because I would be holding onto the sheet, which obviously was a pretty rubbish game plan. But I've I've had these fears a lot of feeling like people have violated my body, people have violated my um my physical space. So it's really just brought up how much that trauma still lies within us. And obviously this video isn't just about me talking about my own experience, but I thought that might be helpful to share that, you know when these things happen to us, these traumatic experiences, and obviously they're all on a continuum because some people have really horrific, distressing things, but it's still, even if it seems relatively minor to other people, it can still have a huge impact on us from childhood going into adulthood. And certain experiences can just flood those traumatic memories back and those physical sensations back into us. So since the break-in, um, you know, like my house is a very sacred, safe space for me and um, done a lot to cultivate a space where I feel like it's calm, it's peaceful, I can kind of um, express myself, it's filled with things and music and um, just an environment filled with like pets and love that make me feel really safe and I kind of feel like that little bit of the rug has been pulled from underneath me just for now and it's going to take me a little while to get back into a space where I do feel like that at home and I don't feel jumpy and I'm not thinking about somebody else being in this space that I didn't invite into it. So that's going to take a little bit of time. However, since the physical space, the safe space has been jeopardized, it has really made me think about the, the non-physical safe spaces that 
really are vital to our resilience, to our well-being when things do go wrong because we can create safe spaces as much as we possibly can but things will come in and things will burst those bubbles and will puncture that safety that we've created over a lifetime hopefully not too drastically but it will happen so I was just thinking about the kind of energetic safe spaces that have really helped me since the incident and one of those has really been number one is community so for example like we've got great neighbours we've got amazing family amazing friends a um, great police force who all really held and supported us in a safe environment and made us feel like we weren't alone we had people that were looking out for us people that are, have been checking in on us and just that was such a great comfort and also like the police offered us um, access to like victim support there were support groups and people that we could talk to on the phone or places that we could go to to get help so that was really comforting the fact that you know if you can build even just a small community reach out and talk to your neighbours a little bit more look out for them they look out for you it's a really comforting thing to have and also as well as the human qualities of community and connection and comfort it has also been the um, animals so one of the first things that we were really concerned about was our pets our two pussy cats and they have been such having them and them not being harmed or not going missing after all of the pandemonium of having like police dogs in the house and all this crazy stuff it was a real comfort to have them safe and with us and not take them for granted and have that kind of like lovely support of animal therapy and just being with those little um, flusters to make us feel better so definitely animals as well as people and just talking on like the animal thing like as well with humans is kind of not underestimating the benefit of really amazing hugs and just like being able to be embraced and held physically by a neighbour, by a partner, by parents, by friends. It's been so comforting to just be able to reach out and say, I really need a hug, can I have a hug? And had lots of lovely hugs with people this week. So yeah, the idea of community, the idea of building that neighbourhood community as well as that friends and family, the animal therapy and what it's really shown me this week is as well the power of just slowing down so it really puts things into perspective and maybe makes you take a step back so I found little things like I've been driving a lot slower in the car I've been taking like not the motorway route the slower route just to feel like I'm more grounded and walk into places as much as I can like being in nature has really helped me as well so I think sometimes the things that bring up the trauma in us remind us of what we really need which is often to be grounded and to feel safe so that idea of slowing down and I've been also feeling like I've been having loads of dreams about being in water and being in nature so I've been trying to like go for like really like restful swims at the gym and um, taking lots of baths because water is a really important part of my stabilizing my nervous system and feeling calm so I've been doing as much of that as I can as I possibly can so yeah I think that they were all the sort of main points I wanted to talk about and um, just that being mindful which is in the slowing down and really recognizing that safe spaces are so important and if we don't make room and we don't nurture and cultivate those safe spaces that's when things can go really wrong and I've had that in my life where I've not invested and really been aware of how important all of those different um, 
like as well as the physical home, all of those different safe spaces that I've just talked about, like I had neglected those and when then things were difficult and things went wrong, I really struggled. So I'm so thankful that I've been able to really focus a little bit more over the last few years on how important all of those safe spaces are. And also as well the fact that I'm doing counselling training. So as part of the counselling training, a bit like anyone who goes to like an AA group or um, some sort of support, any sort of support group really where there's a safe space for you to share and feel supported. The counselling group's really given me that and my amazing counselling tutor. So I'm really thankful for having those physical um, sharing groups where I've been able to talk about the trauma. So I hope this has helped anyone that may have been going through anything similar, whether it is a break-in or whether it's some sort of violation of something within your body or within your life that you feel has really come as a shock and has caused some trauma. So fingers crossed we are going to be back to normal happiness next week and I'm not unhappy right now I just I'm in a bit of a I'm being honest and saying that it's been a really difficult week but I still wanted to post a video so hope you found this helpful and if you want to like and share and subscribe you can do all of those things somewhere here or somewhere here and I will see you next week for another video all right thanks guys bye